every game that revolves around combat has the capability for the player to select different skills or different weapons, whether it's a first-person shooter or an RPG. In this tutorial in our combat series, we're going to take a look at how you can implement such a system. For this tutorial, we'll take a skill bar from a more RPG style based, but it's just as easy to implement the code that's behind the skill bar on, for example, selecting a different weapon with the mouse wheel. So that's what we're going to be doing in this tutorial. So let's get ready and let's get coding. Do you want to learn how to design and make games? Or maybe you want to learn more about Godot? Then subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to make sure you don't miss a thing. Also, if you got any questions, whether they're on this tutorial related to Godot or maybe a question about the games that I developed myself, you can either ask them down in the comments below or you can find me on my Twitch stream where I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. The schedule for my streams is down in the description box below. Let's get started. Now, before we can code the skill bar, we of course need a skill bar. So I've created a skill bar and I've chosen to create this um, up front um, because this is a combat series and not a user interface series. However, I do want you to be able to follow along with this tutorial series, so I am going to go over how I created this. If you're not interested in that, it's probably going to take a couple of minutes, then you can look down in the description on the timestamps and you can uh, qu quickly go over uh, other parts of the tutorial if you're more interested in that. If you want to see how the user interface is made, then stick around. First, I created a canvas layer. Um, so this is a canvas layer, which I renamed to GUI. The canvas layer is basically a layer over your game world that is going to be always following the camera around. So it's perfect to put your graphical user interface elements on like the skill bar. And then I've added a control node, which I renamed skill bar, and I've set its view, uh, sorry, not here, is layout, not view, uh, to the center button. And you can see the position right there. It's in exactly the center of the viewport at the button. I've done nothing else with this skill bar. It's only a container node that holds the rest. Then I've added a texture rectangle, um, which I've set the size to 500 by 66. With expand on, I've added the paper background image that I have right here, just to make a very easy skill bar. It's not about making it beautiful. It's about making something that we can use to create a piece of code that you will be able to implement in your game. That background um, is uh, taking the the parents position so the skill bar and it's growing to this uh, to this size by the grow direction these are in by default on end end which will create a skill bar a little bit in this area you have to set the horizontally growth direction to both ends so it will expand horizontally in both directions from its parent and vertically to the beginning so it will grow to the top that's how you get the skill bar exactly in the middle at the bottom on any screen size and this is this is responsive so if you're if you're developing for mobile it will always be at the center of the screen uh, on the bottom then we have added a hbox container which with, with layout we set to full rectangle so it takes the full rectangle size however with some margins on the left and the right of 10 pixels now under the hbox container is where all the stuff is we have a selected skill and six shortcuts these seven elements these seven nodes are all uh, texture rectangles and they're all with um, expand on with a size of 60 by 60 and a vertically a shrink to center setting so that they don't take the full 66 pixels but only 60 that's why we set shrink to center I have added the double edge um, image to make sure we have a little bit of some depth and at least it looks a little bit representable then under each of the shortcuts so that's these six buttons here <clears throat> we have a texture button because we need to be able to press this in the future when it has a skill loaded We want to be able to press it to select that skill. So it's a texture button These are layouts to full rectangles or they also have the 60 by 60 size But we didn't do anything else with them because we're going to be filling them with code and not uh, hard-coded by hand the selected skill also has of course um, a container but this is a texture rectangle not a texture button because we don't need to be able to press the texture um, that is inside the selected skill so what's going to happen we're going to load our skill bar with the skills we have available and when you press it the image will be copied to the selected skill um, part so that you have a visual um, feedback on the skill that you currently have selected so that should allow the player 
to click these buttons and he will say this picture changed and then he'll say okay this is the the selected skill and then you know what you what you have selected what you're using at the moment so that's pretty much it um, do make sure that this, this texture rectangle and all these texture buttons under here have their expand property set on within the inspector so that we load an image into it by code it's not going to resize the node but it's going to resize the texture to the size of the node that's important because else your skill bar is going to look really weird when you start using the code on this. Um, uh, there's a little bit of a label, by the way, in the middle here, but that's just only here for margin margin reasons to make sure that these are nicely separated by a minimum of 30 pixels by default. So I've given that 30 pixels um, width right there on the x-axis, and that's just there for margin. I, I can rename that. That's uh, maybe a, a good idea. Margin. So that's a skill bar. Now we're going to be filling it up. So let's get coding. Now that we have our skill bar, we must make it functional. We're going to start by making sure that the buttons under each of these shortcuts is connected to a function. To do that, we could use the in um, in editor signals uh, inspector and uh, connect the press functions. But in this case, we don't only wanna know when the button or a button is pressed, we also wanna know which one is pressed. To do that, it's actually easier to connect them by code because then we can also input different variables. So we're gonna first select the first button of shortcut. And we're gonna go now into groups and we're gonna give this a new, we're gonna add it to a new group. Now when we go to manage groups and shortcuts, we can actually uh, filter for all these texture buttons and we can add the other five that are under there. As you can see, now all our shortcuts are in this group. Now that we have added them to a group, we're gonna add a script to the graphical user interface, the canvas layer. And under the uh, ready function, we're gonna be connecting these buttons up. Now what we do is that for every shortcut, which will be, this is a new variable, in the tree get nodes in group shortcuts, so this is gonna get every single node in the group shortcuts that we just created, that we added all those texture buttons to. So for every shortcut, so this is now um, the reference to the node in that group, is gonna connect its press function, and is gonna connect it to this script, to self, and is gonna connect it to a function called select shortcut. So we gotta make sure that that function exists. And then it's gonna also give it an extra variable. It's gonna give it a shortcut. So that is the reference node, that's the texture button. It's gonna get the parent, so it's gonna be the uh, texture rectangle here, and it's gonna get the name. And of course we named our node shortcut one to shortcut six. So in here we'll have the shortcut as shortcut one to six being added into as a as a as a variable as a property so now we don't only know when the button is pressed we also know which one is pressed so now we're going to make sure that we have something to select now that the buttons are connected we need to make sure that we can have actually have something to press to do that i start off with defining two variables on the top here First is a shortcut path, which is the path skill bar right here to background to HBox container. I'm defining it on the top here because we'll be using it several times. And by using a variable for that, we make our lines a little bit shorter and easier to read for future reference. We also create a new dictionary. That's why we use the curly brackets. And that's gonna be the loaded skills. Now these are the skills that we're gonna be loading into the skill bar, but this is hard coded. In your game, you probably want this uh, this dictionary to be coming from somewhere else, not hard-coded in the script. It's either from a player save file, where the player has defined itself which skills it wants to be in the, in the skill bar, or it could also be a dictionary that is defined or expanded upon while the game is playing. For example, in a first-person shooter, take for example PUBG, you find different weapons and based on the weapons you find, what's loaded in the skill bar is different. For us, we're gonna go with a hard-coded one. Then, as soon as the uh, scene has finished loading, we can load those skills into the skill bar. So we're gonna load the shortcuts and that function will define underneath here, load shortcuts and we'll give that a little bit of a code. Now what this code does is that for every shortcut, 
that it can find within the dictionary loaded skill. So it's going to take all the keys. So this is going to be an array of shortcut one and shortcut two. But if we add more here, it will load all those other ones as well. We're first going to be defining a new skill icon. So it's going to be a texture. And a skill icon is going to be loaded from our assets folder skills. And you see that right here in our assets folder, we have our skills. We have our different sprite sheets for our skills, but we also have our skill icons. So for example, the fireball and the ice spear that we're loading right now. So it's gonna uh, go into that path. It's gonna uh, take the loaded skills shortcut. So it's gonna take, for example, if we're talking about shortcut two, it's gonna def get retrieve ice spear and it's gonna add underscore icon.png to ice spear, thereby we build up the path to this ice spear underscore icon uh, PNG file in our assets folder. So it's gonna load that up as skill icon, then we're gonna get the node shortcuts path, so that's a shortcuts path right there, plus shortcut, so that's gonna be shortcut one or shortcut two, plus the texture button, that's underneath the uh, different shortcut nodes, and we set the normal texture to the skill icon we've just defined up there. Now with this, we can uh, play the game and we should unload, see our fireball and our ice spear being loaded into our skill bar right there. So far, so good. Now we can continue by actually what that we, when we press this, because we can press it right now, but because we only have a pass in here for a select shortcut, we need to make sure that actually some stuff starts happening. Now to make all those buttons really functional, we're gonna be of course be um, passing over pass here with a new piece of code. This is gonna look very similar to the load shortcuts function, only it's gonna be on the go. So whenever a button is pressed, we get the shortcut. And remember, that's the name of the parent. So that's gonna be shortcut one, two, three, four, five. Exactly the same names that we get in our loaded skills dictionary, shortcut one, two, three, four, five. So the first, we are first we're again defining the skill icon just as we do on the top here we again go and we basically have exactly the same piece of code and again we take the name of the skill out of loaded skills shortcut because this shortcut shortcut one is equal to the name of the node so that's how we are referencing exactly the same make this code really easy so then we get the node shortcuts path again this quick load and then we get the selected skill texture retangle instead of the shortcut texture button and we set this texture to the skill icon and that will be the same as um, the selected skill then we also get the parent of the graphical user interface where this script is in so we get the map scene we get the player node and we set the selected skill to loaded skill shortcut. So it's gonna be either Fireball or Ice Spear in this case. So to make sure that this works, we also have to get the player script. And on the top here, we can set a variable selected skill to make sure that we can actually push that to the player so that in the skill loop that we will be defining up here, we can use that selected skill to preload the proper spell to make sure that we get the right spell animation. So with that done, we should be able to play the game and we should be able to at least visually see that we have selected one or the other skill and that works perfectly fine. So now our player knows which spell is selected. Now we gotta make sure we can start using that within the game. Now we want the code to actually do something with that skill that we have selected. So I'm here in my player script where we just uh, define the selected skill and we need to be doing something with it and we want to give this selected skill the name of the skill we want to give it to the spell that we're summoning onto the map scene because the spell needs to know what it is am i an ice bear am i a fireball or maybe am i an ar-15 round or am i a shotgun slug so in the skill loop here we can um, add a new line and we're going to say that the spell instance skill name is equal to the selected skill. Oh, that's the selected skill. Of course, that means that on our spell script, we have to make sure that not only a fire direction is available, but also a skill name variable. And now under the ready function, we can add a little bit of code, which is gonna be a state machine. Let's give me an extra enter here. So you can see this is the new piece of code. So under the ready function, as soon as this spell is spawned into the map 
by uh, the click of the player. We're going to match the skill name with, in this case, Fireball and Ice Spear. In the future, you probably want to match it with an array of things. Um, but for now, because we hard coded it, in the future, we're going to elaborate on this a little bit with more data. And we're going to can set different properties. So by removing the 90 damage on the top here, I can now say, okay, when it's an Ice Spear, the damage is 90 and it should be fast. And when it's a Fireball, the damage is high, but the speed is slow. So it means we can also remove projectile speed. So now we set different properties for the two spells that we can select and thereby we can we create a system in which we can create many mechanics which are dependent on the skills with this match command. So let's replay the game now and see if this actually worked. So let's find George. George is totally ready to get another beating. And when you select the Ice Spear, you can see we have a fast skill with not too much damage and the fireball is slow and, and deals much more damage. So this is it for today. This is our skill bar and the ability to create different properties for your different skills. And this will also make, is, is a foundation for this combat series because now we can do more things. We can start introducing things like, um, like stun mechanics. We can do things like knockback. We can do things like, um, yeah, well, freeze, you name it. We can, we can start fiddling around with different mechanics. Uh, and we can make a, a new skill for every single one of them. And probably the next one that I want to do is I want to create area of effect skills, or maybe that's going to be your rocket launcher or your grenade in your in your if you create a more modern or a shooter game. So that's going to be up for Monday. And for now, we're done for the day. All right, guys, if you like this video, then please smash that like button and hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on the next episode when we introduce area of effect skills. Also, again, if you want to uh, talk with me, ask me any questions, go dot game related, game development related, my own game development, uh, visit me on my Twitch stream. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, links, descriptions, shared all everything down below in the box. I hope to see you next time. And until then, keep gaming and keep coding, guys. See you later.